Hey guys, welcome to the Goose Gaming. Today we are doing a how to and well how to play the Jaguar, the tier 4 French destroyer. So we have Philippe Abinot on as our commander here. He just adds some extra torpedo range and gives us the standard fall perk, which as we lose health, our guns reload faster. So, if we go into upgrades and loadout, I have aiming systems mod one installed, and I've not gotten all the way through. I can boost it, but I'm not going to. I'm saving that for other ships. Uh, the loadout, I'm running my little duck of war flag, uh, and then I have the revolutionary camouflage on it. Also, I have all these boosters, uh, just so that it can grind through the uh, current campaign faster. Switch over to the survivability and the stats. Uh, at the hit points, with the hull B, you get the 16,180 hit points with 3 to 10 millimeters of armor. Very good for its tier. You do not see very many tier 4 ships have this much health. I think a couple of cruisers have like 20,000 health. So this thing is almost a cruiser. Uh, main battery is 130 millimeters, 5x1. There are a couple that are hard to get on target, but it's fine. And then the HE shells, you want to use these a lot. Chest to sound fire is very good. So I've done it before where I've been in gunfights. And I've just been setting the thing on fire, whatever I'm shooting at, on fire just multiple times. The AP shell damage isn't bad, but it's but going with the pattern of all French AP, use it sparingly. Don't try and use it too often because you will be let down at times, but if you do get a chance, use it. To the stars of the show, the torpedo launchers. 2x3, 550mm. The reload time is really good. It's cut down a little bit because of my commander. But they reload fairly fast. Sometimes not fast enough, but whatever. 6 second, 28 degree turn time. It's common with all of those. But where it really stands out is its maximum damage. It does almost 20,000 damage. And that is something else. You will see that in the video. I hit battleships three times with torpedoes and they explode. Like, it's insane. Seven kilometers, you do feel that a lot. Uh, and then the torpedo speed is 58 knots. So torpedoes are fairly fast, I find. Also, your engine is your best friend. Maximum speed of 37.3 knots. With the engine boost, you can get all the way up to 42 knots, I think. So that translates to roughly 80, 84 kilometers an hour with engine boost. Uh, turning circle is 660 meters. And just takes forever because it's a long ship. And rudder shift time is 4 seconds. Not terrible, not the greatest. But concealment. Detectability range by sea is 5.6k. Detectability by air is 2.9. Guaranteed is always 2. And de detectability while firing in smoke is 2.3. However, that last one, you will rarely get it because you don't have your own smoke generator. Go to the overview. You get egg aisle and no smoking. No smoking uh, means you don't have a smoke screen generator. And th this thing is fairly egg aisle. It, it may be fast and you may just drift around corners rather than actually doing something, but it is what it is. And then the description here, an ancestor of a subtype of large destroyers, French, contre torpille, uh, um, I'm not trying to say that again, uh, that were fast moving ships, their speed being typical of the French Navy. You will see that in the cruisers too, the cruisers are very fast. In contrast to the destroyers of that time, these ships had large dimensions with powerful artillery armament. They entered service in 1923, and there were six ships in the series. 
if you look at all the ships down the French line, they all have the almost the same, like the Chiopa, uh, Chiopa, uh, ha- is almost the same, except it just goes faster. So, yeah, but it's a good-looking ship. I I like I like my destroyers. They they're fun to play. I've been trying to get a video on that Katsuki, but it's hard because it's really hit or miss with that ship or any of these destroyers. But yeah, the video also is not super high damage video, but it's just a kind of fun video showcasing ship strengths and weaknesses. And as it is described, it's high risk, high reward. Now onto the video. Hey guys, welcome to the match. Uh, today we're on Trap, yes, we're on Trap and New Dawn. Trap. They, they look similar to Trap. Kind of. Uh, morning or uh, evening kind of thing going on. So, I'm in the Jaguar, as you will know. Um, and this game just showcases the goods and the bads and how careful you have to be with this ship. This ship, it's amazing, like the torpedoes do so much damage when you hit. They do more damage than Japanese torpedoes, which is saying something. Because Japanese torpedoes are literally the epitome of good torpedoes. But I, I request support because this thing doesn't have smoke. And it shows sometimes because smoke is literally your little fallback. And if you run into trouble, you run into enemy light like, cruiser all of a sudden, just pop your smoke, and then they can't see you unless they're running sonar or radar. So I move in towards C. Usually I don't exactly love capturing bases right off the bat because I'm scared of enemy gunboats because that's what they will do. They'll go cap the base and then they'll kill any like torpedo boats that come and try to cap with them. I launched my torpedoes here to Konigsberg. And I pop my engine boost to try to get away from it. You do not want to be on the receiving end of those guns. Also, in my thing, I said that I had uh, the Jaguar Hall B on. In this match, I actually do not. I'm at 12,480 health. Usually you get 16 to 15,000 hit points when you put that whole B on, depending on the commander. So I capture, I'm capturing C here, and I just do a little lap around this island. And the lap is literally just buy myself time and take cover. There's also a coning out here. Coning's are actually a pain to kill for some reason. I don't know why they're so hard to kill. But just recently I had a match where like there was like five conings on the enemy team. Liz was and literally at, at the end, it was me and the Nassau. I think I was, yeah, I was in my New York. And I and rather than try to actually shoot the coning to death, I shot an iron duke that was out further taking more of his, his hit points, and then I rammed him and then the Nassau ended up killing the Iron Duke. But I ran the Conan rather than actually trying to shoot him. So I've captured C now. By doing my little lap around the island. And now I try to push out on this Conan, but I am also wary of the Conan's bird. So I actually dropped both my sets of torpedoes into the water. As you can see here, I'm going 42 knots bridge. Translates to probably around 45 miles an hour ish and 80 kilometers an hour ish. I don't know the direct conversion, but I know to, from knots to kilometers an hour is about. So I start moving towards B to try to get another cap for our team. And I'm just watching my torpedoes there. But th- this ship though is, you can just, if someone spots you, you can die very easily, especially if the entire enemy team decides to focus you. 
or if someone spots you and the entire enemy team is preoccupied shooting battleships, you'll you'll have free reign. These guns are good. They are very large, so they do some damage with their AG when you actually hit the target, and provided they don't shatter. But whatever. And they also have a decent fire starting chance. Here, I see that the coning is at 8.5 kilometers out. And I start to close the distance rather than capture and beat. Try to get the torpedoes off on them. Because what's better than dropping torpedoes at a battleship and taking all of this health? Like, it is super satisfying seeing all the health go away. And you will really see that happen with this torpedo cycle. I place the torpedoes one down the line that you're supposed to fire down and then the other one a little bit behind and then it does turn in. I fire my guns too knowing that I'm spotted and why and they like to go through that little hole where the middle turret is. Fires back HG but it make a very nice uh, shield up there. And then all of the health this Just showing how potent these torpedoes can be. And the ones that I launched behind, all three of those ones missed. So we literally just sailed in a straight line. That's not what you do, especially once you see a destroyer. It's one thing sailing in a straight line while you're fight, fighting a battleship. It's not that terrible. I don't advise it, but you can do it, it's one. But sailing in a straight line when there's a detected destroyer somewhere around you, just turn as wherever you want. Usually what I do is I try to turn out, especially if I know that the destroyer has shorter range torpedoes. If it's Japanese torpedo destroyer, I, I freak out. And I try my best to kill it, however, if it's French, where the torpedoes go 7 kilometers, if it's German, where the torpedoes go 7 kilometers, or if it's the Americans, where the torpedoes go nowhere, same with the Russians, I turn out. Because when you turn out, the torpedoes will most likely run out of two before they reach. Especially if you're on the edge of the torpedo. Right here, I show this how good these guns can be, especially against destroyers. They are not the most accurate in the world. But I'm getting like 317 damage per day, which is terrible, and I get the kill on that. See an Ish Ishmael here? They drop my torpedoes both just right down the white line, I don't care. I know the dispersion, the torpedo dispersion will mess them up just a little bit. But it won't do all too too much to And if you see in the chat soon, you'll see a fur pocket tell me to come back. If I already missed it or not. But it's in here somewhere. But I dropped my torpedoes, and it's right before my torpedoes hit. It tells me to come back. I'm pretty sure. But, just waiting for it. Yeah, right there, the Ishmael tells me to come back. And I say yes. Yeah. But then I see the torpedoes hit, and I realize how potent these torpedoes are. And I say no. And I go to push out. And this is the end of me right here. This is the death of me. You do not do this in the Jaguar. Stay with your team. I got too greedy. I want them to focus that enemy cruiser, but all of a sudden an Aoba comes out of nowhere. And I start firing my HG. And I switch to AP almost immediately. Because for us, a Japanese cruiser is these things. I feel the need to die very fast. But all of my hit points are gone very fast. I start getting touched by every single person around here, and I'm not doing too much to afford it because I'm, I know that I've messed up, and I know that I'm dead. I, I spew out some torpedoes there, and he decides he wants to turn back in. He actually misses that shot. Ishmael tells me to come back and rip as I die, as a Leander snipes the kill from the Aoba. But, yeah, that was completely my mistake. But that shows how careful you have to be 
in the Jaguar. It, it does not fare well against anything that has rapid reloaded and fairly small guns. This picture of the game. Our team actually does really well here. After I die, the rest of our team is fairly concentrated besides the Ishmael that decided he wanted to go out on an adventure to the edge of the map. But, it's fine. And this Korean print. I don't know about this ship. I, I see it all the time, but I don't necessarily think too much of it. But it looks like it's so narrow that you just dodge ships. But the thing is, though, that Ishmael is forcing the Korean to crane. I don't even know what he's doing. But. It looks like the Kranzi Krim is trying to bow tank him to prevent his shells from going in, which is actually a good idea because I'm just in free camp mode too in this. But uh, he likes to go and go right beside this island. Good idea because now, if you look on the mini map, not very many people can shoot him. Only the Ishmael can and he can shoot the Ishmael back. Ishmael shoots and the Ishmael has really good guns. And he absolutely makes the I turn around here with my little free camera. See that there's a Leander and a Britannia. And they are going to go down fairly fast. The Leander runs into an island, which is not necessarily good because he ran into the island broadside. This Dallas has a very short fuse AP, which is very good, but he, he threw him out with it. Like he's scored some good hits. People are shooting at him, and he wants to make this a kill. So then there's a duel between a leg and a and the Aobo. I think the Aobo wins this one. Yeah. yeah, I watched the whole act last week. And I'm pretty sure I'm telling you in chat to launch a turbo Because I know that he needs to launch torpedoes here. To try to get this Aobo to come down with him. Actually, no, he sets the fire and the Aoba does not have his DC. He misses the torpedo, but the fire will kill the Aoba. As you will see, in just a couple of seconds, he gets just a flesh wound and as the Aoba burns to death. Great that the leg gets the kill on the Aoba. Now it's only the Fratonia against our Might of Earth. Already have this health as well. These French ships can be brawlers if they want to be brawlers, but I found that the Britannia is better if no one shoots at it and just fires in the back and just kind of steals kills and stuff like that. But I, I did like the ship. But right now I am on the Petro I just started the Russian, the Russian stuff. But Britannia is almost dead. And the Dallas ends up getting the kill with this AP for some reason. I leveled up in the campaign. I'm already on like tier 30 or something like that. And I came top the leaderboard. Somehow with my 65,000 damage, I did it. But thanks for watching and have a good day everyone.